How do you view that both in the context of, of global motorsport? Do you think that I'm I'm right when I say it exists as, as the greatest racing spectacle or, or is there some competition there? There's not a lot of competition, you know? Um, <laughs> just the, maybe it's the 24-hour Le Mans, you know, maybe? No Grand Prix, in my opinion, matches it. But as a spectacle, yeah, it's not far off. It's a fair claim, you know? And... Winning that race is so much harder than what people may think. It's just uh, one of the most deceptively challenging tracks in the world, which is ridiculous. You know, think a four-corner oval, how hard can it be? Uh, <laughs> a little bit harder than you may think. It really is sort of, you just need to look at the winner's circle of this race to know exactly what company you're putting yourself with. This is a race won by great drivers. Every every year I do look forward to it. I look forward to every Indy, Indy car race anyway, but Indy 500 especially, it carries such such a weight with it. Like, if you win this, you are in amongst great company. You know, you're witnessing a great driver at work. And especially nowadays with the uh, grid being as competitive as it is, you know, it's just not something you can miss. Yeah, they're all so close together at the moment in IndyCar. And standing, or should we say sitting, at the front of that grid is Scott Dixon. He will be on Sunday behind the pace car, leading the group around on the front row. He's put it on pole with the fastest ever four-lap pole speed in the history of IndyCar, 234 miles an hour. Both as a, a driver, for as a sort of a Kiwi driver, but also just a race driver overall. How, how good is Scott Dixon? Outstanding, I, I guess, is yeah. the is the way to put it. His his forte really is about maximizing potential in the race. Like he may not have the fastest car in the day, he'll still make something of it. He'll still drag home the points, which is why he's. I need to Google. It. Is it five or a six time champion? Like one thing I do have written down in the notes also is that. There was also something that uh, Tom Gaymore, the commentator, or at least the, the Sky commentator that we have in the UK, kind of fills in the gaps of the American broadcast when they cut to ads and stuff. He's a friend of the show and he's been on before and he's coming back on after the race to give us a sort of post-race breakdown. Um, but it was something he mentioned in the commentary where experience goes a long way. For this year, we've got Scott Dixon, who's 41. We've got Elio Castro Neves, who's 41. We've got Juan Pablo Montoya, who's 46. We've got Tony Kanan, who's 47. And we've got Takuma Sato, who's 45. All of those drivers are taking on what we are in relative agreement as saying one of the hardest challenges in motorsport. Just as a physical challenge, the speed of that race, the intensity of the kind of sensory overload of being on that brickyard speedway. Do you think experience is going to play a big role in, in the outcome of that race and, and keeping your cool in such an intense situation? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like any other sort of big race, you know, or it's even like being in the final of a, um, it's like being in the final of a major sporting event. Like if you've been there before, you sort of know what to expect. And with these races, especially, you know, they have the big races have weird characteristics about them. Uh, weather conditions, the momentum of the race, generally when cautions would happen. Um, <clears throat> so if you have that residual knowledge and you have that sort of feel for the event, you know how to work that to your advantage. Both drivers that you listed down, they've been doing this for how long? So they know that stuff and Dixon would know this first and foremost. Yeah, he's starting on pole. He's got a very fast car. But he's also been on pole at Indianapolis before a f quite a few times. And he's only yep. won from there once. So there is just there are just no guarantees in the sport, especially not at that race. Jeez, um what, what was it? Uh 2011 JR Hildebrand should have had that race. Last corner, oh God, straight yeah. too wide, yeah. gone to the marbles, bang into the wall. Dan Weldon comes through a thousand yards before the finish line to win. So there is just no let up really in what this race produces. And they know that. They know how to work that to their advantage. So 
yeah, experience does play a massive role in that race for sure. So it is where it comes out to shine, I guess, in the sport is just these races where you can use it to your advantage. Whereas with um with my like Formula One, for example, obviously the more youthful the better. And uh, someone that has moved from Formula One to IndyCar, but has well will, will be running his first ever Indianapolis 500 this weekend is Roman Grosjean. How do you think yes. in in his mind he can approach that race as a newcomer in a, a relatively experienced field? There's nothing like it. There's I mean he's obviously he's run a few oval races now. I think two oval races this season, or maybe just one in IndyCar. He didn't run the ovals last year. Um, but of course it will be will be his first Indianapolis 500 this weekend. For Grosjean, can it be anything more than a learning experience? Can he realistically look towards the podium when we've spoke about the role that experience is going to play? Anything's possible in this race, you know? So I wouldn't rule that out for him. He's with a great team, and I think it's paramount really that they they preach to him that, you know, this is an endurance event really at the end of the day it's not like a lot of other uh, indie events where um you know it's relatively straightforward in terms of strategy and so forth this just has its own sort of character um and just help help him navigate the minefields and just stay on the lead lap and be with the leaders in that last sort of stint because there will be a caution with x amount of laps to go uh, yep. just make sure you're there you know and make sure you're best set up for it um it's not about where you are at the start it's about where you are placed at the end of the race yeah roman has never been one for um cool headedness he's a very fast driver much faster than what his uh his f1 career would suggest but you know Keeping a cool head sometimes is a bit of um, a futile task. Absolutely. And another driver who's going to be competing in this weekend's Indy 500 and one that is maybe pegged to be kind of in the front line for American potential Formula One drivers is Colton Herter. And he's running a really, really good championship this year. I think his story particularly is one that really fascinates me because more than anything, because his dad is his race engineer and obviously Brian Herter, an ex-driver himself. Having your dad as your race engineer, I think would be a pretty interesting one. Um, I'm sure my dad might be listening to this right now. I'm sorry, dad, if you if you are, but I'm not sure how good we do at that. But Colton Herter starting P25 in that race, it is such a long race. It is an endurance event that is going to be potential for him to move forward. Do you think realistically with a maybe a good performance at the Indy 500 it's something that could put him even further on the map of, of the potential Formula One Andretti team if not even the other um Formula One teams yeah I think yeah. he's already in that sort of ballpark you know like Colton reminds me well firstly he reminds me of Carl Grimes on The Walking Dead but I mean he reminds me mainly of <laughs> someone like a uh, a Montoya or a Jacques Villeneuve back in the 90s for IndyCar. It's a sort of unbelievably exciting talent. You know, let's see how they are in Formula One. When they got to Formula One, they were exciting. They were fast. They were all this stuff. And it's great because you want drivers like that. And Colton really, really, really is just an exciting driver to watch. At the end of the day, you want to see the best drivers in Formula One. And with Ricardo kind of drowning right now and McLaren giving Colton some, you know, mileage, I mean, who knows? I mean, like, I'd love to see him in Formula One, but at the same time, IndyCar is so pure, you know? Like, compared to Formula One, which is, you know, comparatively rubbish when it comes to fair racing... <laughs> You know, yeah. You're, no, in Formula One, in Formula One, yep. you're bound. Yeah, in Formula One, you're bound by the car. In IndyCar, it's not as bad as that. I mean, obviously, teams and equipment do play a factor, but you can at least do a bit more with in IndyCar than you can in Formula One. Colton's just an exciting, exciting, exciting talent. So I'd love to see him in Formula One. Who knows? We may get our wish.